Okay, I believe we're live. So welcome to Tamara's Closet today. It's such an honor today to have a, I have a really special guest artist with me today. Um, I had kind of been following him on Facebook for I guess about a year ago I started seeing some of his artwork and he has the most incredible, I call it a Cinderella story to, to say the least. And today I just, I want to get to know the man behind the masterpiece, so to speak, as well as celebrate his his life and his triumph of overcoming being a, a victim to becoming a victor. He's ha he has an incredible um, story, and CBS has referenced this man as one of the fastest rising talents in America, and joins Fox, NBC News, NBC, and newspapers and magazines in touting his success across the nation. And he's noted for his iconic art piece, which is called Two Minutes of Silence, which was painted in response to the September 11th attacks in Manhattan, which we're going to be talking about that a little bit later in the interview. He also owns three of the largest artist-owned art galleries as well. So really, without any more delay, I'm honored to introduce to you the wonderful and talented man, and I kind of call him the emotional heart painter from looking at his art, Peter O'Neill. Are you there, Peter? I am, and it's a pleasure to be here, Tamara. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just so honored to have you here today. It's um, It's been a, a joy just, you know, looking at all your art and, and learning a little bit about you. And you have such an amazing story of, you know, tragedy to triumph, and yet you overcame your obstacles, and you know, you really created an incredible life and career for yourself. And I know I had read that you went through some really tough times, you know, before you were an artist. Um, and I know that your career kind of came later in life. And I wanted you to tell us a little bit about that experience. You were in the hospital and, and you had uh, were overcoming a suicide attempt. And now today you're gracing homes and businesses all over the world with just wonderful emotional pieces of work. Can you, can you tell us about that time in your life and, and, and what was the turning point for you, Peter? Um, I, when I was going... Hmm. I'd gone through a terrible divorce, um, which was very emotional for me, and uh, it was my second divorce, and I just looked at myself as a failure, both as a man and as a provider for my family, um, and when I was in the hospital, I had started drawing before I went into hospital. Um, I looked around at the other people in there and realized that these were people with serious afflictions, that were probably never going to get out or, or, or be in therapy the rest of their life. And I just decided to stop feeling sorry for myself and realized that I had all the tools if I applied myself. And, uh, you know, at that point I realized life isn't easy. Um, you can't wait for things to come for you. You have to go get them yourself and take the risk and do things that make you happy and uh, don't harm other people. Um, and, and that's the road I took the day I got out of the hospital. Um, I was just determined to, to make a success of myself, not only for myself, but as a role model for my son, to show him you can overcome anything in life. Um, no matter what wall gets put in front of you, you try to figure out a way over it, or around it, or under it. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how I've lived my life since I, since I began this journey. Um, I began it in St. Augustine, where I had boarded a bus from, from New York Port Authority. Um, my dad had offered to pay for the flight, and I said, uh, pay for a flight to Florida, and I said, Dad, if I'm going to make it as an artist, you know, I'm gonna, I have to try to sell some portraits here, and um, if I can't sell portraits even to get a bus ticket, then I, I should be looking at something else. And uh, fortunately, I was able to go to Red Bank, New Jersey at the time, and did some portraits on the street, pencil portraits. And I was able to buy a ticket on a Greyhound bus and just began my journey and fell in love with St. Augustine and been here ever since. That's amazing. Now, because you had said in your bio that you kind of checked out of the mental hospital and then checked back into life. Yep. How, how did, um, that, that had to take a little bit of time though. How did you... Um, I, I decided when I was in, in the hospital that I was trying to 
to please everybody else. Right. Uh, and and to fit that role, as my parents saw it, as society saw it, um, as someone who worked nine to five, who you know wore a jacket and tie to work and um, provided for his family, I did not have that ability. It just was not in me, um, and I had failed miserably at it. And I realized, you know, when I was in the hospital, that. You know, I always wanted to be an artist. I drew since I was little. I had never painted before, um, but I, you know, just I knew I knew I could do it. And when I get out of the hospital, I used to because I was not working, and I did not have a car. I used to walk miles to Barnes and Noble, and I'd look through the art books, and I'd sit there and say some of the abstract work or, or some of the realism work. I'd say, well, I could do that. If these people are going to do it in, there in a book, why can't I do it? And that's really what made my decision. And it, it, it's also where I draw my self-worth from. You know, when I sold in the beginning, I was selling the drawings for $15. And today they sell for a lot more. But it doesn't matter to me what they sell for. It's the fact that somebody wants it that I find so cool. And that's where I gain my self-worth and my ego and... Um, Allowing me to sleep with me, kind of. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Now, did you have? Were there artists in your family background at all? Or no, my uh, my dad was an attorney. My mother was a uh, housewife. Um, they didn't understand the art side of it. Um, there was some musicians in my family, um, but again, they didn't do it for a living. It was always, you know, get a real job and, you know, use this as a hobby. <laughs> and that's, that's what I had to break away from. Right. Now, does your son have the artistic talents as well? No, but he, but he, plays, he plays music. That's great. But now he, he, works, he works in a gallery for us, and he's doing a great job. That's awesome. Yep. Now, when you came out of the mental hospital, was there a series of paintings at all that were inspired by when you were in that dark place in your life? Did you have, come out and have a series of paintings? That almost, almost every one of the female studies that I do is inspired by that time in my life. Um, I, I kind of paint from life. I paint from, you know, from observation. And I look at people and... and, and, and um, I, I study people. I like expressions, emotions, body movements, body positions. Um, these are all ways of telling a story of what that person's going through without verbal communication. Um, so that's that's what I focus on. And to tell you the truth, Tamara, if I had tried to do this when I was 21, I would have failed miserably. Number one, I did not have the discipline and and the drive. And number two, I didn't have the life experience to draw from. Um, could I, you know, could I draw when I was twenty-one? Yes. Could I draw subject matter that I see today? No. No, not at all. And uh, art, art to me is communication. And you know, if I, I, I try to tell a story with my paintings, a story of my life, a story of other people's lives that are similar to mine. Um, it's 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 just great. I love it. I yeah, love it. it is. It is a great outlet. It is a great tool to communicate, and I I can see that in in all of your work, and and it's just so diverse. Um, I also, you know, I was reading your bio, and you sort of touched on this as a child. You said you didn't get much support, um, and that's pretty common in in for people who have big dreams, and I think it's the reason that. Why most people never really uh, achieve their dreams or go after them because they don't have that support. How how did you handle that as a child? Or well, I was the youngest of five, growing up in, in an Irish Catholic family in New York. Um, my outlet at the time was sports. I played basketball, golf, tennis, whatever I, whatever we could do to you know. We were never home like these days playing video games. We were outside, rough and tumble and. And having fun and getting tired, um, but but growing up in that type of family, again, um, the idea was to become a professional in the business world. Um, I have 
one brother who's an attorney, another sister who's an attorney. Um, one is a software engineer, and another one is a retired police officer. Um, so, you know, when it came to artists, everybody thought, yeah, you know, you're good, but, again, you got to get a real job because you, you're not going to be able to support yourself or a family. Um, and in, 19, in 2004, when my dad passed, I was at the hospital. He was down here in Gainesville, and uh, we knew he was going to pass sometime in the next next week or so. And I walked in the, in the room, and the nurse was there, and he said, this is my son, Peter. He's the artist out of everybody, which and he, he, he named, you know, the two lawyers and the software and the cop. He said, he's, he does the best, which to me was one of the greatest things he's ever said. Because I, I no matter, you know, no matter what we look for in life, we always look for approval. Every individual, I don't care who you are, and to get your father's approval after, you know, as a son putting him through what I put him through with going into the mental home, getting the divorce, and... Um, it was it was just it was wonderful for me anyway, and I think he was truly proud, which was which was great for him. Well, that's great that he he said that to you before he passed. That had to be um, that had to be really a powerful moment. I think it was. It was, and it was one of the saddest times of my life too because I lost him. He was my best friend in the end. You know, he probably just knew you had talent and you were going to be okay. And and I don't know, sometimes I think our parents kind of, sometimes they, the, one, the stronger kids, they don't feel like they need as, as much, I guess, as the others. So you don't hear yeah. that, I'm proud of you, till, till kind of the end. I don't know what. Yeah. 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 You know, so that's amazing. It was, it was, it was great. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, to, to do something like this, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, you hear about these, oh, you're a star overnight or whatever. Um, it's been 19 years I've been doing this. And I wish I had started when I was 20, even though I didn't. and Probably didn't, wouldn't have made it. Um, but I had a lot of catching up to do when I started at 35 years old. Um, so I, I, I would set up on St. George Street at... Not eight o'clock in the morning, and I'd be done at eight o'clock at night, and I'd do it seven days. Wow! Because I had to catch up. I had to catch up with people who have had more skill than me, um, and that's really where I had to work on was my skills. Um, when people come in today and said, "We remember you. We bought from you on the street," I always apologize, thank them for the hot dog they bought me. <laughs> because generally, I you know, if I was hungry, I'd, I'd sell something for ten bucks and just go buy lunch. <laughs> but, you know, I always apologize because the work, in, in my opinion, and, and, and most, most artists, when they look at their earlier work, think, think it's terrible, and I'm no different than them. Right. Um, but it was, it was cool enough to connect with people back then, and it's still cool enough to connect with people today, which is I'm very thankful for. You know, I've been able to paint what I want, um, and it connects with people, and that's, that's cool. That is great. That is great. Now, what I noticed about your art is you're, you're just extremely diverse. I mean, there's so many different paintings that I saw um, in social media and in your gallery that I, I had to ask, um, what style would you call your work? Because you really, you're so versatile. I, I bounce around for a number of reasons, the main one being um, that I own my own gallery, so I can put in it whatever I want. I'm not limited. A lot of times an artist, and this is somewhat of a generalization, but if they are lucky enough to get into a gallery, which is a very difficult thing to do, um, when they do finally sell a piece and they bring their next piece, the gallery owner says, no, no, just like the last one, because they know it's sold. So they have a sellable product. So now you end up, at least for the gallery's sake, if it was, let's say, a painting of poppies, they want you to paint poppies, flowers, all the time. They really don't want any any diversion. Um, in, in most cases, there there are some cases where that's not true, but in most cases. So in my gallery, I'm able to paint whatever I want, and if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, I take it out and I keep it in my own personal collection, or I paint over it. Um, but that that's why the wide diversity. I have a lot of interests, um, and it doesn't matter what it is. 
whether it's a landscape or, or a female study or a male study or a horse race or flowers, there's still emotion in the painting. Um, you know, you could look at one of my snow scenes and you get a feeling of, of the coldness and, and the, the, to me, the feelings of home because I'm from New York and I miss the snow. I think um, I have one of those right here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's one of my recent ones. Um, that's up in Times Square. Uh, you know, it. I love this. I love this one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it touches it touches uh, people, and, and there's emotion in it. It's not just a, a pretty painting. Um, so you know, the hard part of this job comes in the creativity side of it, not the not the technical side of it at this point. Even though you know, I still work on my technique and and I bounce around. Um, my latest ones are kind of um, almost impressionistic, where I'm using just short brush strokes of varying color to convey the convey the feeling, uh -huh. uh, and it just it, it allows me to expand because I tend to get bored. I don't know if I have ADD or something like that, but I do get bored, and uh, that's another reason for my diversity. <laughs> what? Yeah. I'll do, I'll do a series, and the series is maybe three paintings, and then I'm done with it, and I'm off to the next one. Now, I noticed you had quite a series of the, the models with the mask on. What was the inspiration behind that? I think I've got one. I had gone to uh, Venice um, the first trip probably in 2007, 2006, and... Uh, it's funny when people put on a mask, they take on a whole new personality, um, and that's what I try to explore with it. Plus, in, in the mask to me is just beautiful. Um, so I order a lot of masks online from Venice. Um, people think they're Mardi Gras masks; they're not. Even though I have galleries in Orleans, they are Venetian masks, Venetian carnival, um, and we've been back there one one other time, and um, it's just a, a wide range of color. Whether I design the mask myself in a painting or I'm, or I'm using one for reference, um, and and again I try to capture not so much in the one behind you, but in some of the ones with the females in them, try to capture emotion in their eyes and just let their eyes tell a story. No, I love. Yeah. It. I noticed. What is this? They're like bars in front of it. What that, is, that was one of my ADD things. Um, uh, I had some paintings that did not sell. So what I did is I cut them into two-inch strips, and then I took a piece of plywood and painted it and dripped it like a Jackson Pollock, and then glued the painting back down onto it and then dripped over the painting. So really? it has kind of it gives it an effect of movement. Um, and I did a series of probably five of them, and then there, there's a, a very thick epoxy that goes over the top of them, which is like a glass. Um, and again, everything is an experiment. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Some of them, the epoxy wasn't mixed right, and they didn't dry right. And <coughs> Shoot. Excuse me. Um, but again, it was an experiment. Um, people love them. I'm not going to do any more of them. I just felt like doing something different and stretching my creative or my creative wings a little. Because mm -hmm. uh, again, I get bored. I like so, them. I like there was one with you had the trombone player, and I really like yes. that one. It had yeah, that was, that was based on a Miles Davis one, and uh, yeah, that was a cool piece too. Yeah, I really did like that. So I enjoyed it. So I yeah, it's interesting. Those masks are from Venice. I I thought it was Mardi Gras too, but I I no Mardi Gras that. masks are basically just a, a a mask that covers your eyes. Yeah. Venice will cover the whole face with the feathers and. There's a whole costume that goes along with it, with the capes, and it's this really neat stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's just a, that's just a feather hat that I bought. I buy a lot of props when I'm when I'm traveling. Um, and then uh, the mask was put on one of my models, whose name is Gogo, -Go, who's a wonderful model down in New Orleans. Um, and again, I look for models that that I can talk to, and as we're working, I can kind of capture what kind of mood they're in. Right. And, yeah, so, give some direction as to what I want. Some people can nail it right away. Some other people can't. Other people can't. But I work with oh, probably five models. Um, worked with five models over the years who I still work with, um, who have become great friends, both to myself and my wife and my ex-wife, and everybody's great. 
<laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Now the two minute of minutes of silence. That's a very emotional piece. Um, I'm curious as to where you were when that tragic day happened, and when did you decide to paint the piece? Was it from? Was it just something in your mind, or was it a photograph? No, I, I was actually on a on a flight to New York that morning. Uh, Martha, who was my third wife. Yes, I'm married four times. Um, That's okay. <laughs> I've been married three times. <laughs> and uh, she had never been to New York before, and, and I, I'd had a gallery for a couple of years, um, and we finally had saved up enough to take a trip, and we, we planned a trip to go back to New York, where I am from, um, and we chose the travel date at September 11th, and we left at 7 o'clock in the morning. So we were in the air when it actually happened. Wow. They put, they put us down in Richmond. Um we were able to get a hotel room and get the last rent a car the next day. We turned around and drove home. When we got back to Florida, we were in the midst of a hurricane slash tropical storm on September 12th. Um, I went down and checked the gallery, and uh, you know, being from New York, I knew there were a lot of people in that building that I knew when it went down. Wow! And I started doing some research on the computer, uh, had some names, and I got very emotional. And uh, based on all the images I'd seen on the TV and the newspapers, and um, I came up with that image. Uh, I had a flag on it to show that you know it was an attack on America. I had the cross in the back, not to reference the Catholic Church or, or Christianity, but just to reference some kind of religion. Um, because you know, a lot of people were wondering why and looking up to, to heaven for answers. Um, myself, I'm not that very religious, but, you know, I, again, I observe people, and, and this is what they were doing. Um, once the piece was done, the local hotel came in and said they were having an auction for the victims. Would I donate anything? And uh, I showed them that, and from that point on, it took on a life of its own. Um, we gave away 17,000 copies of it. We sold the original for 20000 We donated all that money. We donated a bunch of uh, Jaclays for various fundraisers across the country, um, and we're still giving it away to this day. So it's 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 amazing. Out of a terrible tragedy, we made so many many good friends. So you know, um, would I prefer it didn't happen? Absolutely. Um, there were people I went to high school in the building that never get out. People that were injured. Um, but to, to this day, it's kind of neat. If I want to go to New York, I, I can just call up a firehouse and stay in one of those um, because they appreciate it so much that we did. Yeah. Now, did you have an interview with CBS or, or was... I had an interview with CBS earlier in my career, um, and that, that's where that quote came from. Um, and then the, um, the other ones were... were or uh, mentioning the work, not me so much. But this, this, this two minutes of silence appeared all over the place. Yeah, it it really. And that's good. I didn't want to be mentioned. Right. I wanted the painting to be seen, but you know, I'm I'm kind of a low key guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I work in a very public business, but I'm a very private individual. Right. Uh, and and it's 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 <laughs> it's kind of. Uh, Opposite of each other, you know. I'm not. I'm not afraid to discuss my past and my personal personal life. But again, when I get home, I want to be home and I want to be private. Yeah, you know? I understand that. No, I think that's. I think a lot of people, very highly gifted people, are, are kind of that way. A lot of um, celebrity types and. Well, I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> you you are you are you're celebrity. No, I'm not. I don't want to be a celebrity. I just want to be a guy who goes to work and paints. And I can say I did a good job, and I helped some people, and I made some people happy. Um, but as far as celebrity, no, not me. You know. Well, you you are to me because your work is okay. so wonderful. I think it's just great. And well, if you ever met me in person, you'd think I'm an idiot, just like my ex <laughs> 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 Oh, that's right. Now, I'm gonna, if you hold on, Noel and Audrey, I want to introduce my wife. This is Noel. 
She she Very runs handy. she runs all the businesses. Without her, I couldn't do it. And this is Audrey, who not only is my personal assistant in the studio and works on all my prints <laughs> and helps me with originals and everything else, she's also a model in many of the paintings. I was going to say, I thought I recognized her, and it's yeah. so yeah. And I couldn't do it without these two. Oh, they're I couldn't. wonderful. Yeah, they're, they're great. Um, they, they allow me to kind of goof off once in a while and let me just worry about painting, which was always a problem in the beginning. Uh, because I was running the businesses and running the employees, and um, now all I get to do is paint, which is fantastic. Well, they keep you straight. <laughs> yeah, she has one of those. So. Yeah, she has it already. Yeah. Oh, she has yeah. it. Okay. Um, yeah, and they they keep me on my toes. They do. They're not afraid to yell at me. So see, I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just a goofball like everybody else. <laughs> No, you were also, Peter, commissioned by Independence Bank in Kentucky to create a, a series of the Revolutionary War, um, and I know I don't have one of those. I thought I had one printed up, and I saw a huge one in your gallery that was just beautiful. I think Yeah, that was actually the, that was in the bank, um, but that was the first series they had hired me to do, and since then I've done four or five different series for them, one on... Uh, on horse racing, which I just completed, because they are in Kentucky. Yeah, that's one of the ones. That's one right. Um, yep. Yep. Another one on virtues, which was a fun series to work on, um, where I where I used some uh, historical reference for virtues. Um, and then you know they 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 probably on another twenty individual paintings of mine. Um, they've been a great client. They are uh, the, the the president of the bank has become like a brother to me. Um, he says the same thing. You're a celebrity, and I just laugh and tell him to shut up. <laughs> well, um, he's a wonderful guy and a big supporter of the arts, which is which is very important for people like me. Yeah. Well, you have. Um I don't know. I just really, I really do enjoy enjoy your work. So I, when I saw that um, the series of the Revolutionary War, that was really, that was really, really nice. And it was fun. And I had done one which was, uh, I don't have an image of it. But with all the tragedy in my life, I also had a full blown house fire in two thousand eight. Wow. The house burned to the ground, so I lost a lot of my old work, or, or images of my old work. I had done one called Defenders of the Flag, which was a soldier from every war back to the Revolution. And it was right up in, in, in including a fireman uh, from 2001. Uh, they were all uh, gathered in front of the flag, kind of looking up at it. It was, it was a neat piece. Um, and that piece hangs in Independence Bank as well. You know, but it, it they challenged me on my diversity, Independence Bank does. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll throw some ideas out there and then create it on my own, which is great. Um, it's, it's stuff I normally would not paint sometimes, and uh, I love challenges like that. Well, I like the horse. The I mean, I'm a big Thanks. horse person, so I, I really I do like that one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because your work is so diverse, I was wanting you to, I'd love for you to tell the viewers about how you come to create a piece of work on a given day. Does your... Do you, I know your ideas come from experiences, but where where do they come on a? I mean, is it the emotion always from something that you've a life experience, or is it an idea that comes to you in a dream or something? No, I, all? I used to dream about work when I was on the street. For some reason, I don't anymore. Um, probably because back then, that's all I had to worry about. Um, but now it really comes from from life experience and watching people. Um, to seeing different images, uh, and then coming in with working with a model and, and trying to convey what my thoughts are and her thoughts, and it's it's a collaborative effort with the model. I know with Audrey, we work very closely together because uh, we're like brother and sister. And uh, Noel as well. Noel is the model in all the uh, piano series paintings, which were uh, were fun to do. I went and bought a uh, junked up grand piano and painted it up and uh, set her on top of it and did paintings of her on it. Um, that was a very popular series as well. But again, only three, and then I got bored. 
<laughs> you're off to the next. <laughs> you know, and other times I'll be out and I'll be driving and there'll be a sunset or something. I'll think, well, it's, it's just beautiful. And I'll take reference photo with my iPhone or my camera, whatever I have, and I'll go back and work from that. Um, and then this summer we bought a small boat. Um, so that, that gave me a new perspective to look at from the ocean or from the river back back into the city in St. Augustine or in marshlands. And, you know, I don't do many landscapes, so when I do, I have to really, really motivated by it and, and, and moved by it. So right. I, I like human emotion. Well, I saw a quote that I liked that you said. You said, my work can be sad, sentimental, happy, rude, or whatever, but it must convey feeling at the core level. Yeah. Yeah. I think any artwork should do that. I, I really do. Um, again, it's got to tell a story. and It's, it's got to re, it's got to relate to the viewer. You have to be able to look at it and relate it to your life. Um, like this, this piece here, this making the first move, which is a model I used for years in Bronwyn. Um, she's actually on a cell phone under her ear. She's after work. She's just got her, her kind of white shirt on, and she's still got her high heels on, and she's trying to work up the courage to call the guy for the first time. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So she's got the, she's got the wine. She's got the cell phone. Um, and again, you know, with, with with beautiful women, a lot of them are men think they're unapproachable, and that's not always the case. And sometimes, you know, they have to they have to take the, the first step. And you know, she's getting up the, the little bit of wine to give her a little courage. You know, and now will he answer the phone? Won't he answer the phone? Who knows? But that's up to you to finish the story from there. <laughs> Was that it's part a, of the? It's pretty, simple, it's pretty simple and basic, but it's you know I've had more women come in and go, oh my god, that's me. <laughs> that's how I know I have a success because I I touched in on one of the feelings. You know. Now I could relate to one of your. It was I think it was in the relationship series, and there's one where she's sitting at the table and in a bathrobe and her head's kind of down. Uh, yeah, it's called the break. That was the first kind of female study that I, I had done, and uh, I was a little nervous on how it would go over, and it became one of my most popular pieces. Um, again, she's sitting at the table. You don't know. Um, I call it the breakup. Is, is she defeated? Is she sitting there going, oh, my God, I did it again. I picked another loser. Um <laughs> They're trying to corner the energy and say, okay, we got to start this process all over again, and maybe it's better that I stay alone, you know. Um, so that And that, that kind of taps back into my time in the mental hospital because um, yeah. that's how I ended up there. I, I didn't have the, the strength at the time to go on, um, but that all changed, which is a good thing. That one's really spoke to me because I actually saw myself and her from when I had my last breakup a year and a half ago, and that that one I was like, oh, I I, I love that painting. I'd love to have that painting because. Yep. <laughs> and it's um, it's funny the day the day I did it, I brought it into the gallery, and there were there were two girls in there that worked for me. One was Martha, my ex-wife, who still runs New Orleans for us, and is, is still a great friend. Um. She was there, and another girl worked for me, and I turned around, and I said, okay, you ready for this one? I turned around, and I showed it to them, and they go, eh. I go, what do you mean, Adam? I go, it's okay. <laughs> and I thought, at the time, you know, when you do a new piece, it's the best piece you've ever done. <laughs> so they said, what are you going to call it? I go, I'm going to call it Picked Another Loser. And they said, you can't call it Picked Another Loser. And that's how it ended up with the name, The Breakup. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they were wrong. I was right. The, the piece took off, and uh, we're almost sold out of it now, so it's, it's a good thing. Wow. Yeah. I like your first title. You picked another loser. Picked another loser. <laughs> and I actually, later later on, in, in about two years ago, I did another painting and called it Picked Another Loser. Um, <laughs> I always thought that was a great title for a painting because we all pick. I, I don't want to say we pick losers because in our eyes, the person's a loser, but in their eyes, we're a loser too. That's right. <laughs> There's only three sides to the stories, hers, his, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. Yeah, you know, that's right. You know, um, but 
you know, picked another loser. I always thought it was a great title, and I finally got to work it into another painting. Uh, so. That's great. Well, do you have some more art that you want to show us? That's pretty much it. Um, everything else is online on the gallery. I'll show you one of my palettes, which is kind of neat. I'd like to see that. Some artists come in and have a heart attack. I see this. Um, it's just a, a, a quarter inch plywood, and I use it over and over again. Wow. Um, it's kind of indicative of how my mind works with ADD. You know, I'll just bounce all around, um, and I use both sides. And this this brush is stuck in it. This cigarette stuck in it. This paint cap stuck in it. Um, <laughs> And then believe it or not, you know, every once in a while, we'll put one in the gallery and they sell, which is beyond me. I don't know why, but people want to own a, a, a palette, I guess, that's used by a professional artist, and uh, it's kind of neat, you know. Um, and then I have art snobs come in and say, the palette is the best piece in here, <laughs> because they, they don't like, you know, uh, realistic work, and that's okay, too. Yeah, yeah. But do you you don't use that over again, do you? You just use it and then you somebody buy. Oh, no, I use it over and over. You do keep using it. You'll use that one again. I use well. This one's pretty much done because it's so heavy. Okay. Because um, <laughs> it's probably about a quarter inch of paint on the thing on both sides. Um, <laughs> but you know, as 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 driven as I am at work and 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 how many hours a work week I work with the, with all the galleries and everything, when it comes to palettes, I'm real lazy. I mean, I got a bunch of wood I could cut, but that means I got to set up the saw and cut them. And then I got to prep them so the oil doesn't dry into the wood. So, you know, I'll just use the same piece over and over. Yeah. As long well, as it's dry, as long as it's dry, then it doesn't create any mud. So we're good. Well, that'll that'll be worth a lot of money one of these days. No, no. <laughs> hey, well, now I know you were self-taught artist, which I think is really, really um, great and unique. And how did you transition from beginner to, to where you are today without training? A lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of experimentation, a lot of uh, studying other people's work, um, a lot of color theory in, in my own experiments. Um, early paintings, while they, while they were still drawn well, the color I thought was horrible. Um, so it's, it's just... That's the almost crap part of it is the color mixing. Um, there's formulas that you can use, and uh, again, I don't mean write down formulas, two parts this, one part that. Um, it's just experimentation on the color. And, you know, the more you do anything, like anything else, the better you're going to get. Um, and have I read, reached my max yet? I hope not, because then there'll be no reason more to paint. Um, so, you know, I still experiment every day with, with color and. Uh, with drawings, every piece presents a new problem, whether it be drawing, which can be mathematical. Um, when you don't even think you're thinking mathematical, it's all mathematics, angles and proportions and perspective. Um, and uh, color-wise, you know, what are you trying to convey? You can portray emotions with colors, so um, that works as well. Right. Now, do you use the, br the brush and the knife? Do you, what technique do you use mostly? I use brush and knife, both. Um, sometimes I'll draw the, the image underneath, and other times I'll go right in with the brush. Um, and then the knife I'll use a lot on my flower scenes to build up texture. Um, I'll use it if there's, um, you know, just need for a real strong highlight in a piece, I'll use the knife and build up the texture with it. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty traditional when it comes to, to tools. Yeah. You know? Now, was this painting one that the bank um, commissioned you to do? No, that was that was one that I did years ago. That uh, was really my own personal story. You know, my dad and I played a lot of golf growing up. Okay. And uh, you know, again, it tells a story. Um, did we play when I was that young? No, but I wish we had. Um, and it's, again, it's a father-son bond. It's creating a memory. Um, and it, you know, it, it could have been anything. It could have been hockey. It could have been basketball. It could have been football. It could have been anything. It's an emotion. Um, and again, it's been a very popular piece. Very popular piece. Yeah, it, I really like this one. I thought. Yeah. It, yeah, really. You know, they're dressed in the same outfit. They have the same little shoes on, and 
Yeah. Um, it's a simple painting. A lot of my paintings are simple. They're not real technically deep. They're not glazes and glazes and glazes or, or you know, different materials. It's just I, I try to keep it simple and tell a story. Well, with all the pieces that you have, like you've got Louis Armstrong here, which I love, yeah. And then you have a lot of the um, series of the musicians. Was that with an influence of New Orleans? Is that Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. New Orleans, um, when, when I first opened there, and, and again, Martha opened the gallery first because we had gone through the divorce, and that's where she wanted to move to. So I opened a gallery there, and she went to work for us. <coughs> and my first trip there, I was so inspired by not only the music, but just the general feeling of creativity and the feeling that nobody judges anybody and that anybody can do whatever they want. And, and you don't even get a second look on the street down there. And uh, on Royal Street, I believe, last time I counted a few years ago, there were probably 80 galleries. Um, now I own, I own two of those 80, but uh, it's, I think it's wonderful. The more galleries, the better. Because then you know people are coming to buy artwork, whether it be yours or somebody else's. It doesn't matter who they buy, as long as they buy something. Um, but it's a great place for inspiration for me because people do some experimental work there, and I, I you know, I like to look at it and and draw my own conclusions from it. Um, and it's, it's it's very diverse city. It's a very diverse city, and we love it. You know, I couldn't live there with all the partying that goes on, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little too old for that, uh, 20 years ago maybe, but uh, now we, we like to visit. We go down about once a month for a weekend. Um, I used to keep an apartment there. We don't anymore. Um, so we just stay in hotels when we go down there. But it's uh, anytime I need to get rejuvenated, I seem to either go to New Orleans or New York. Both of them have a great energy for me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wonderful people and, and, and just wonderful food. Um, like I said, the creativity level down there is amazing. Whether it's street artists or street performers or bands in the clubs or artists in the galleries, it's just uh, everybody's doing their own thing, and it's great. Really great. Yeah, I, that, I've never been most, to New Orleans. Most of the work I hang in my house is not mine. It's it's work that I buy from from guys down there on the street. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, art communication. I don't want to. I already said it. I don't want to say it to myself every day for the next rest of my life. So once it's out of me, it's out of me. Yeah. Um, I'd rather have some somebody else's piece up there that I could look at. Yeah. No, I think that's really nice. I yeah. did. Um, what about teaching? Have you ever? Is that something you've ever done or think about doing? Or. No, 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 not for me. Um. I think I think everybody should just uh, the, the problem I, that I've seen with teaching, and again, you know, I have very limited experience with it. Um, there are great teachers out there, but there are a lot of ones that sh shouldn't be teaching because by the time you're done, you're painting just like they are. Right. You're painting their subjects, their their style, um, and you have to develop your own. Now, yeah, I guess as a start, it would be good. Um, there was an artist, Charles Dickinson, that I that I still show in the gallery to this day. We're great friends. I befriended him when he was on the street in St. Augustine, painting the same as me. He'd been there uh, a number of years before me. And he's a professional artist. This is all he does. And really, I learned color theory from watching him paint. Um, and for a while, we kind of painted the same subjects as, you know, the, you were on St. George Street and St. Augustine. So he did uh, a landscape of St. George Street. There's only so many you can do. Um, but as far as teaching, it's not, uh, not my thing. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't, I, excuse me if I curse, but I don't even realize how I do it half the time. I, I don't know how I can tell somebody else how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. You know. So how did you, but how did you, I know you talked about your gallery a little bit, but how did you decide to have your own, I mean, because I've well, had other artists and they don't seem interested in doing that, and I would I would think that would be. I remember being on the street in St. Augustine, and there's a there's a store that was underutilized. I want to say, I guess the owner had retired and the son was running it, and they didn't really care about it. And I said to Charles Dickinson, I go, how do galleries work? And he said, well, they take 
fifty percent of the of the sale. And I said, well, why would you want to do that? Why not be the guy who makes fifty percent on somebody? And that's when my business sense kicked in. Um, and then in nineteen ninety nine, we all got thrown off the street in Saint Augustine. Um, <laughs> and I, I was able to save a little money, and I opened up a small gallery, and then. Um, learned about location, and it wasn't the right location. And I corrected that issue and, and got up to a better location and then a bigger location, and then, you know, it just took a natural course. Or, you know, it's, the business side of it is is fun for me as well. Um, there's a lot of decisions that go into it. Um but really, it comes down to the simple one: location, location, location. And this is this is a a, a, a hint for the young artists out there, or artists that want to want to become professional. You have to get the work seen. If it doesn't get seen, it doesn't sell. In order to get it seen, you have to either get in a gallery, which again is very difficult to do, um, or you open your own gallery. If you can't open your own gallery, then you do fairs or you, or you become a street artist where you can do it every day. Um, and it's it's not the easiest thing in the world sitting out and having, you know, thirty thousand tourists walk by you while you're trying to trying to work on a painting. Um, so that it's great training for you as well, and you learn how to sell. Um, but again, you have to get it seen. It's it's, 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 it's seen. Nobody's going to buy it. It's that simple. Well, how has social media hasn't that kind of been a game changer as well, or it has to a degree. I mean, we have the Facebook fan page. Um, I don't have a personal account. I, I did at one point. It, it it was taking up a lot of my time. Um, and Noelle said it per perfectly. You know, I don't know if it was a video that went around on her or something. She said, "Put the phone down. There's a whole world in front of you." Um, so we did that. Um, but we have the fan page and we have we have the website and uh, websites are great and fan pages are great, but nobody's going to go to them unless they've seen the work already. Right. For the most part, so you know that's that's how we use it. When they come in the gallery, then they're handed a pamphlet with all the contact information and the fan book page, fan page, and the uh, the website. Um, and we have pretty good pretty good website store that does fairly well because of it. Again, nobody goes in and says. I want paintings in New Orleans. You know, it's it's more so. We were in that gallery. Let's go to that guy's website. Yeah. We were in this gallery. Let's go to that guy's website. Um, so it's 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 been great in that respect. The fan page is, uh, you know, Facebook has some issues. Um, we have I think almost four thousand fans, but when I do a piece, it only goes up to two hundred of them. Oh. They, they they want you to buy ads and everything else, so you know it's it's interesting. But it is good when I put a piece everybody everybody likes. Um, you know it'll, it'll get uh, four hundred likes or something or two hundred likes, and then I know that when they liked it, all these other people started and they liked it, and then you end up with new fans. So it's it's kind of cool, you know. But I'm not a big social media guy anymore. Yeah, I got, I, I got a little too into politics and was about to have a stroke. So. <laughs> Social media will do that to you. Yes, yes, it will. Yes, it will. So, you know, Noelle and I decided to live in the real world and, uh, you know, get off social media. Yeah. So. Well, I just have one more question. And I'll let you yeah. go. What advice would you give to someone, no matter what age, I guess, who who wants to be an artist? How would you direct them since you work, were so tall? Work your ass off. <laughs> It, it doesn't come easy. Um, don't walk around dressed in black and, and trying to look like an artist. Just be an artist. Just paint. Get your respect from your peers, and, and most most importantly, get your respect from your respect from the viewing public, because um, they're the ones that are going to pay your bills. Um, get the work seen. Uh, if you and again, just some basic business things. If you're gonna open a gallery, make sure it's a good location. Don't be afraid of the rent. The higher the rent, the better location. Okay. Yes, you can find a place for 500 a month, but what good is it if nobody's gonna walk by? That's get, get, get you know, 
my formula has been tourist cities because when people on vacation they're happy and they do buy art in, in, when they're on vacation. Um, and the, the more tourists in that town, the better, or the more, more conventions in that town. Um, that's one of the reasons we love New Orleans because they have great conventions all year round. You know, 60,000 orthopedists, um, cardiologists, uh, teachers. Um, they, they have every convention in the world there. Um, but again, you, you have to get it seen. You have to be able to take some criticism. Um, but you know in your heart, when you do a piece, whether it's good or not, um, you know, you have, you're you looking at it with a good eye if, if you have the ability to draw it. You know whether it's drawn right, all right and, and, and conveys a story. Um, and and it, it, it's, this is really for you. It's, it's a lot of perseverance. And it's a lot of problems that come up that you need to be a problem solver. And you cannot get defeated. You can't. And it's easy in this business to get defeated because we're putting our souls on the line. Those are our feelings and our talents. And like I said, you know, it's, it's where I get my ego from. So if your ego is constantly getting beat up, which it does, even, you know, in, in my galleries, we get beat up every day. People come in and don't like the work. And that's okay. That's, you know, that's their prerogative. Um, but you have to be able to take that, you know, and realize that your work is for everybody. Um, but yeah, you just you gotta work your ass off. <laughs> it's like anything else, it's not easy, especially in this world today. Um, it's just not easy. Yeah, well, you certainly have done well, and you took that we, twenty years. So far, we're doing so far. We're doing good. You know, we 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 have some plans this year that we'll be we'll be disclosing, and uh, you know. We're just trying to do the same things we've always done, and, and and the neat thing about it, and again for the young artists, is if you promise something, you have to deliver something. And for that reason, a lot of the people that bought from me in the beginning are still my clients today, 17 years later or 18 years later, um, because we've earned their trust. We've earned their. Um, you know, if if we sell them a piece and we tell them it's going to be there in a week, well, damn, it better be there in a week because otherwise I start rolling heads around here um, because our word is all we have in this life. And uh, you know, or if you, you take on a commission and you say it's going to be some done by a certain date, commission's a little different, but you try to get it as close as you can. Um, you know, it's it's that's the business sense of it. You know, the artistic sense is. Uh, it's an interesting journey, and anybody who's, who's trying to do it, I can say this. Name on your hands a hundred famous artists through history. If you can name ten, you're doing pretty good, and if you, this is the business you're trying to make it in. So if yeah. you want to achieve, achieve that level, you know, there's not many that have done it, and I, I'll never get there, but I try. You know, we all try. So... I think that's a good way to close it with that statement. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's good advice. No, you you made you certainly made up for those nineteen years you had to catch up. You worked yeah. hard. Yeah. You got some beautiful work out there, Peter. Well, thanks. Thanks. I'm I'm honored to have you here today, and I hate to wrap it up because I could actually sit here and talk about your paintings yes. all day. <laughs> but and I want to well, thank, thank you again for being here today on my show, and I'm just thrilled to have you here. Uh, and I want to thank the viewers who are watching it live or the replay because this will be in a replay. Okay. And, yeah, and thanks for the continued support for. Um, Tamara's Closet and helping to celebrate the big dreamers of the world and uh, make sure you follow my blog because I'll have more. It's TamarasCloset.com. I'm going to have more well, for more inspiration but also uh, more on Peter. I'll have an upcoming blog article in a couple weeks. There will be all the links if he has any other links other than his website. I do have that here. It's just um, O'NeillGallery.com so um, you can see more of his art, and he's also on Facebook. I'll have that link in my blog as well, so you can find him on social media. And um, But for now, you can go to O'NeillGallery.com, and then um, I guess I'll just say goodbye, and I'll see you in a minute, uh, Peter, after I take us okay. off the air. Okay. All right, thanks. thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's been great. Right. 
I enjoyed it. Thank you.